Hello, folks. Or in this case, Schmidt. Uh, I am going to open uh, the new pan packs. Let's go that way. Move this camera down. Bop, bop, bop. Uh, let's do that. Put that over to the side. All right. Not sure which one to open first. This one. Or this one. Or this one. Nice array of ones. These three are going away for now. Uh, those will remain unopened for a bit. And I'm going to start with a bullet club. I already took the shrink wrap off. And then I realized, oh wait, I could do this on stream. And you know, why not? People might like that. And it'll be a good video for the YouTube. Uh, let's see. That way. Change a couple things around. All right. So I'm going to start with the Bullet Club pack. Let me put that that way. We get the one standard Super Show die, giving me a nice strike for all your Strike 10 needs. Beautiful box. Wish it could focus better, but it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, I got a few. Uh, beautiful box with a beautiful Bullet Club art. And the patented shrink wrap. So, let's open up the Bullet Club pack. Nicely opened shrink wrap. Put that aside for now. Alright. Going to go with the competitors last. So, let me put them on the side. All right, let me uh, see if I this camera's focus can work a little better, maybe. Let me play with that a bit. Um, let me switch just to one. Uh, let's see if the autofocus. All right, yep, yeah, with autofocus on, it works a little better. Uh, yeah, I will make Bob mad, but, you know, uh, I need to get viewers to my channel, too, sometimes, so, you know. So, uh, the New Japan, uh, the Bullet Club Faction Pack starts off with a beautiful punch at card number one. And then we go into a number two card, look. Hold on, let's see if I can... Come on, focus. Focus. All right. I need to find a good. Uh, let me let's see if I can just find a good. Nope. Focus level for it. Because autofocus is not working out really well, is it? Stupid autofocus. Alright. Uh, so this is look for an opening. There you go. Look for an opening. Uh, stop any lead submission, or each player buries one card in their discard pile. Not a lockup. Formerly known as a lockup. Sure. Uh, it's a, yeah. Good card. One of the new uh, discard berry uh, cards, which is very useful. It's going to be really good late game. And again, that beautiful New Japan Pro Wrestling art on it. No, so the third card in it is the good old fashioned focus. The focusing is the worst here. Uh, oh well, uh, chin lock, and basically look at your opponent's hand. It's beautiful art, though. Not. I don't know how many people play that. Then we got the old staple of a kick. Uh, hmm. 
always good. Number five, we have Swing DDT. I hate to focus on this camera. Uh, which is stop any follow-up submission or bury one in each player's discard pile. And then we got the beautiful armbar. Armbar, as some would say. The rolling forearm. Oh, I really hate this focus. Let me see if I play with the relay. All right, that's working a little bit better. Rolling forearm with the number one still in it. German suplex where your opponent randomly buries one card in their hand. Be great if you have a competitor who likes suplex cards. Uh, we got a nice uh, stare down. Not as epic as the ones we've previously had, but your opponent randomly buries one card in their hand is very good. Number 10, we get a, a knee strike. The, uh, your opponent has a stop and play. Your next turn roll is plus two. Had to make sure I was reading it right. What would a uh, deck be without an arm drag? Yeah, uh, I believe Stare Down will probably get played more than Epic Stare Down. Because Epic Stare Down doesn't even get played as much as uh, Took It On The Chin. So, a good arm drag. A side chin lock. The old staple. With beautiful art. Uh, we got number 13. Corner drop kick. If your agility is higher than your opponent's agility, stop any follow-up grapple. Draw one card, then bury one card in your hand at number 13. So, you know. Uh, interesting stops at the 13 line to only stop a follow-up uh, grapple. But, you know. And then getting a draw net zero cards. But, uh, interesting. I mean, I don't know how many people are going to go with that over a... Just a good old-fashioned stop any. But it's interesting tech. Uh, number 14. We have the same uh, card in that line, but it's Flapjack. And this is if your power is higher than your opponent's power. Stop any follow-up submission. Draw one card, then bury one card in your hand. And in this deck, to round it out, the number 15 is Rope Break. Which is the Technique version of them. Which is, you know. So, you know, you get extra options to stop only follow-ups. If your skill is higher, which is um, interesting. Very interesting. Uh, we have at number 16, a Lariat. Your next turn roll is plus one for each lead your opponent has in play. Uh, you know what? Uh, I actually kind of like this. Other than the few competitors that use the keyword Lariat. Uh, because it's definitely a better version of the, like, um, uh, turn the tables, uh, line in that it's, you're getting a plus one for each one and it's a follow up. So generally, uh, your opponent will have, usually your opponent will at least have a lead or so in play. So you'll at least hopefully get a plus one out of it. Uh, then we got the Yoranagi, uh, the... If you have another grapple in play, choose one of your opponent's cards and discard it. But with way better art than the last one. Way better art. And at 18, we have the figure 4 lead lock. Which is the plus one for each uh, lead your opponent has in play version at 18. Which is, again, I think a solid card. Uh, with all the recent uh, recursion that's been coming out there with like cat scratch line and whatnot... Uh, it's going to be an interesting to see how many uh, people tend to go for these. So, obviously, the rarity of this is going to also put some a damper on some of that. Alright, uh, then we got Elbow Strikes, the staple. See one, stop one. Uh, Neckbreaker, the other staple. See one, stop one. 
And then we have a neck twist for a plus one to power. All right. Uh, now we got the interesting 22 card of Standing Moonsault. Search your deck for a finish and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Your maximum hand size is plus one. Now, uh, this, obviously for me, this is a really cool card. Uh, because for my competitor who has to flip after he shuffles, uh, it's risky to play the... Unless I'm playing, going to try to fish for my finish sub, I can't really go fishing for through my deck for my other finishers. But with a card like this, I could go grab my finish grapple, put it on top, and then still have the potential to flip uh, my finish sub. So it's neat. Uh, then we got the Death Valley Driver, which is the same as the standing moose salt in this text, but obviously with different keywords. Uh, and then the 24 version is the half Boston Crab. Which is awesome. Alright, so for the 25, 26, and 27, we got the 25 is Dropkick. Stop any grapple. 26 is Dirty Tactics. Stop any sub. Each player buries one card in their discard pile. And 27 is Leg Nelson. Stop any striker. Each player buries one card in their discard pile. So, the Bolt Club deck has lots of good cards. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of good cards in that, and actually, I, I really like the uh, Bolt Club Crowd Meter. It's probably going to become my standard one. Oh, yes, and the Bolt Club, you get the New Japan logo on your uh, spectacle card in the back there. I'm very faint. I'm trying, let's see if I can pull it up. Uh, yeah, it's hard for it to show fully, but you can kind of see the imprint there. And the... Bullet Club 1 comes with Interferes, the Newman. Once a match on your opponent's turn, if you have five or more cards in their hand than you do, they randomly bury two cards in their hand, which uh, makes sense with the bury heaviness of the Bullet Club. All right, folks, let me put that back there. And let me get to uh, those competitors. All right, so we're going to start with Jay White. Once a turn roll, uh, when your opponent ha rolls 9 or 10 for their turn roll, you may re-roll your turn roll. <laughs> Which is good. I mean, it's one of those things where it's probably better to re-roll your opponent's turn roll when they roll high than it is your own. But we'll see. Uh his first finisher is the Blade Runner, his finish strike. Uh, turns his 7 agility to a 9, his 8 strike to a 9, and if you re-rolled your turn roll, this card's also a lead. Uh, man, they should have put Kicked in it, uh, just to get the extra bonus. Which, obviously, it's going to be a tough one to pull off as a lead, just because if your opponent rolled a 9 or 10, uh, most likely, if they rolled the 10, you're at best going to bump. If they rolled a 9, it's really hard to beat them to get the turn roll. But, you know. Uh, then we have his Snap Saito Suplex. Plus 4 to power. To turn a 6 to a 10. Look at your opponent's hand. Choose one card and bury it. Add one striker submission to finish from your discard pile to your hand. Which is very good. Um, very good. Yes, uh, right. He's definitely, you want to, depending on your opponent, yeah, you want to get pump your grapple up, and you you really want an 11 for a turn roll, so you can still have a higher chance of winning. You definitely, um, so grapple for a position is good. Actually, you probably, uh, or the one that adds the power. Because grapple for a position is the tech, isn't it? Which is the one that adds the grapple. I forget. But yeah, that's good. Uh, I believe, unfortunately, Technique gets bumped at number 2, line 2. So you can't get that Technique to attend to incre increase that. Um, but yeah, so it can be it can be good. Uh, he probably will make good use of 
turn roll bonuses because you don't if you negative your opponent's turn roll you won't get your gimmick as much so you won't be able to trigger the blade runner easily but if you run turn roll bonuses it will help so that might uh maybe play some booker mania against jay white all right and the tto uh plus one the technique to nine to a ten sub of five to an eight your opponent randomly discards one card from their hand draw one card solid classic type of finish uh, not super powerful. Uh, yeah. Not super powerful, but not bad. Uh, random discards, pretty good, and drawing a card's always good. So Jay White's a solid competitor. I don't think he's... We've seen some powerful, overpowerful competitors sometimes in the indie. I don't think he's overpowered. I think he... I think he's going to be really... I think he's going to really shine in people who do interesting builds. So it's going to be interesting to see how well Jay White comes off in the future. All right. After Jay White, we've got Kenta. One of my favorite wrestlers. I've loved Kenta for so many years. Uh, your strike skill is plus two during turn rolls because, let's be fair... No one strikes harder than Kenta. Yeah. Jay will be... Um... I don't know. Jay in tag. Jay White, he'll be interesting. I mean... I don't know if you if the, your team teams up if you could, because they their role would combine, so I think that might limit that usefulness in tag. But it'll be interesting. Uh, so Kenta gets a nice 12 there. He's going to be pretty good in multiplayer matches because it's a gimmick that affects himself. So, uh, he'll have a natural 12 and a claim the throne. Kenta will be pretty decent because he has a built-in, uh, 12, uh, which will help him avoid, uh, bumping out. Alright, and then we got his finished strike, which is his knee, his famous knee. Uh, so, which makes his 5 to a 7, his 8 to a 9. Draw one card. If you rolled strike for your turn roll, double these bonuses. So, basically it goes up to a 9 power and a 10, which is really good. Really good bonuses. Especially if you got that 12 for your turn roll, which most likely you're winning the turn roll. So, that's good. And it makes sense. It's The knee is a really good finisher. Of course, the move he made famous, despite what some uh, people from Chicago may think, the go-to-sleep. Uh, the power goes from 5 to an 8. The strike goes from 10 to an 11. The grapple goes from a 7 to an 8. And your opponent buries three cards in their hand. So this is one of those indie competitor really good finishers. Uh, I mean, the 10 to an 11 isn't like in a normal match isn't a big deal, but in any stipulation match, it's really good uh, against competitors that don't against competitors nowadays like Swaggy D who blank the crowd meter. So you can't get bonuses. Being able to get over a 10 can be really useful. And yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely wild for Bravo. Yeah, so it, go to sleep is salt, which makes sense again. Again, you're talking about making finishers that fit the competitors. Uh, so, like, the go to sleep is such a classic move that it really needs to be killer. So, it makes sense. And then his finish sub, of course, which is the game over. Uh, plus one, the technique, 9 to a 10, grapple of 7 to a 9. When the crowd meter is 3 or greater, this card cannot be stopped by leads. Which is good, because obviously you're only shutting down like one card in their deck. But it's also not considered an unstoppable, so you can't lose the match with the, cold, the uh, call for the bell or those. So you gotta... If you play your cards right by that crowd meter, you should know if they have those stops, and that'll be really helpful. Uh, Kenta is one of those ones that, when I get around to building, is probably going to be one of my decks that I always keep built. Because I love Kenta. Probably my favorite competitor in all these sets. All right, and the last competitor, El Phantasmo. So, when you hit a card with a kick, dive, or assault in the name, 
Shuffle one card from your discard pile into your deck. So, really good building recursion. Kicks and dives and salts are very plentiful cards. So getting those re uh those are really useful. Alright. So his finish strike is the sudden death. Uh plus one to technique, so that is an eight to a nine, and a plus one strike at nine to a ten. Look at the top four cards of your deck, add two to your hand and flip the others. So basically that's the same effect that we were stealing in uh, Steel Cage Deck 2 with the Wooly on the Ropes line, which is a really powerful 22-24 uh, line effect, plus the ability of getting a 9 and an extra 10. So Sudden Death is real good. It's good. I mean, helps you thin your deck, you get two cards back. It's, it's pretty good, uh, especially early game finisher. To help you set up in case your opponent kicks out. CR2. Uh, plus 2 power. 5 to a 7. Plus 1 sub. 7 to an 8. Plus 4 grapple. 6 to a 10. Good solid bonuses. Obviously. Uh, so. I mean. Really. Pitting hard. Uh, finish grapple. And then his finish sub is the Argentine Breaker Rack. Uh, 5 to an 8. 7 to a 9, draw 2 cards, so a good finish. Uh, a finish strike, though, is really good for uh, milling through your deck and getting good cards. So, I like the finish strike. And the bonuses, the bonuses help the top numbers, which means, in my case, I'm going to roll power or uh, grapple, generally, when I hit a finish, because they're the 5 and 6, so that's usually what I roll for finish rolls. So, like, the finish grapple for me is, like, amazing because it bumps both of those and makes them really solid choices. All right. Uh, so, if you're watching, uh, which one do you want open next? The... Natal or the Okata? Oh yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to have a QR code for some dub step? These are choking hazards, by the way. I've never... I mean, you know, you know, here's the thing. Choking hazard, yeah, I know, for kids. But really, the way I play the game, uh, I tend to choke a lot. Generally, like, late in game, or like when I need turn rolls, I tend to choke a lot. So, which ones do you want? Okada opened? Or Naito? Or not Naito, what the hell is wrong with me? Tanashi. I was reading Naito on the side and not I'm forgetting Tanashi. Save Ace for last? Sounds good. Alright. So, one thing I'm going to say, which is going to be simple, is like, compared to other faction packs, like, and I say that as now, it's like, uh, I always have a hard time opening them. And, like, the first, the Bolt Club one I opened off-stream, of course, went really well. Uh, and now that I'm trying to do it well on stream, it's not. Let me get something to... So, there went my whole argument. Like, oh, yeah, these things open really easy. I'm just an idiot. Alright. Disrobe the box. Disrobe the box. Put the trash this away. Alright, move the old die out. Eventually, that'll go back to Steve Rusk. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, generally, who doesn't like to I love being watched. Technique. All right. Put the box there. All right. And, ooh. Yay. Easy shrink wrap. Easy shrink wrap. Yay. All right. I'll put the competitors to the side again first. And. All right, we got that good old-fashioned punch. Look for the opening. Are they, all the decks the same? Rolling forearm German. Okay. Stare down, side chin lock, arm drag. I don't need to go through slapjack rope. I was kind of hoping the uh, at least the 13 through 15s would vary in the decks, but that's sad. 
But, you know, getting three of the same arch isn't bad. Same crowd meter. But the spectacle is to the rescue. Get that little New Japan logo in the background. Oh, that time. This time it's showing off a lot better than it did earlier. I think it's because it's not as faded as the other one was. So, cool. Once a match on your opponent's turn, if your opponent has five or more cards in your hand, draw two. Solid Valiant choice if you want to play Valiant. Valiant's for people that want to lose the match, though. <clears throat> All right. So, we will start with the Rainmaker Okada. When you roll Technique or Strike for your turn roll, add one lead or follow up strike with Dropkick or Lariat in the name from your discard pile to your hand. Yes, he is extremely good with Doomsday Lariat. Yep. Uh, yes, you did. Uh, because when you roll your 9 or 10, if you have Doomsday Lariat in your discard pile, you can spam it. He is definitely cooler than Adam Page, which isn't hard. I mean, it is Okada. He should be cooler than Adam Page. Because, you know, he's better than Adam Page, and I like Adam Page. Uh, not the competitor card. The competitor card can... I mean, it's only there as a collector item. Alright, so we'll start with his finish strike, because, you know, that's the Rainmaker. His 5 goes to a 7. His 7 goes to an 8. His grapple goes 8 to a 9. If your opponent breaks out, you may add this card to your hand, which is great. One thing... I don't know if you can see there. Uh... The color of the word agility on the competitor card is a different color than the agility on the finish. This is a darker green. Weird. And I think it's just him. Hmm. It's a neat, it's a different shade of green on Okada. You know, they should have someone who looks at that. Alright, aha, uh, his finish sub was the next in line for some reason. The money clip. Uh, 5 to an 8, 6 to an 8. Okay. I mean, not going to win you any awards, but not horrible. I mean, I'd potentially throw Down River Lock in there because I'm a heathen. But it's again, Down River Lock is such a good card. But I'm not sure if it's worth it. And of course, his finished grapple of the Tombstone Pile Driver. 5 to a 7, 8 to a 10. If you hit a card with Dropkick or Larry in the name last turn, double these bonuses, which of course turns your 5 to a 9 and your 8 to a 12, which is uh, very solid. Uh, not the great. I mean, I don't know. I love the Rainmaker's great just for the recursion ability. His finishers, they're good, they're solid, but they're not like, oh my god, like. They're not like Kenta's. But his gimmick is probably more useful than Kenta's. So, you know. Overall, makes sense. It's like it's like they actually have a, a plan on how they build stuff and stick to it. Most of the time. Naito. When your opponent rolls technique for their turn roll, you may bump. Which is... Good. It's it's very good that it's a May, so you're not forced to bump. But you know, uh, against those high technique characters, which a, quite a few of these guys were, uh, it's a very good uh, finish strike of a jumping elbow attack. Uh, seven to an eight, eight to a nine. Draw one card or bury one card in your discard pile. Draw one card. If you bumped on the previous turn roll, double these bonuses. Which is good. A 7 to a 9, 8 to a 10. Bury 2, draw 2. Or no, it's. Yeah. Uh, finish grapple of the Destino. Who doesn't love the Destino? Uh, 7 to a 9, 9 to a 10. If your opponent rolled technique for their turn roll, this card is also a follow up, which is. Good. I mean, unless your opponent has a technique of 10, uh, it's always it's good because you're going to either bump and get a card 
or you're going to be able to hit your finisher as a follow-up. Unless they have a Technique 10, then all you can do is bump. Unless, of course, you're running a card to give yourself a Technique of an 11. Okay, and there it is. And the finish sub, Pluma Blanca. 5 to a 7, 6 to an 8. Once per turn, if you bumped on the previous turn roll, you may re-roll your finish roll. Which... Hmm. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, definitely, I believe the intention is previous turn roll to be the turn before the turn, the roll before the turn you end up winning. Uh, but not just the last one, which, uh, that's very useful. Rerolling your finish roll is a solid ability, even if it won't come up super amount, because you have to bump and then win. But, yeah, using previous is weird sometimes. In that regards. Because some people. And I imagine it will come up. Are going to assume previous. Would mean the. Last turn roll. Which. In super show terminology. They would have used the last turn roll. Instead of previous. So. It fits with the intention. But some people might not get that right. And then we go with. Kota Ibushi. When you roll submission for your turn roll, choose one card your opponent has in play and discard it. His submission is his five. Now, there's a lot to be say for Kenny Omega, who is nowadays, if you can find him, a hundred to a hundred and yeah, right. You can't play it off the bump. So, yeah, the interesting thing with previous though is that uh, because obviously it has to be the bump. Like, if you, yeah, because you'd had a bump, then win the turn roll. So, it, it is that turn, but it, like, previous in some ways makes you think it would have been, like, the turn before or whatnot, but since it's weird timing with, because there's no actual winning with turn rolls, it can come off weird. Maybe I'm seeing issues with it that aren't actually, no one else will see, but it happens. Anyway. Uh, so the beautiful thing about Kota Ibushi is it's, Kenny Omega is great. Uh, you roll a 10, you get to blow up a card. But the problem is, a lot of times when you roll a 10, you're either on the roll anyway and you're winning, and you don't need to blow up something because you're, you're getting the turn anyway. But this one de is more defensive, which I think is, for me, so much better because it gives you a bonus when you're actually rolling bad. So, like... You're rolling bad, your opponent's getting ahead, and you still have a better you still have a chance to blow up a card. So I think that's I, I like this gimmick better than Omega. But that's probably because I roll horribly normally. Alright. Uh, the Kamagoye, uh, which has been spoiled quite a few times before. Uh, eight to a nine, nine to a ten, and a six to a seven. Uh, when this card is in your discard pile and you roll submission for your turn roll, you may shuffle this card into your deck. Uh, I like V-Trigger better than this. Uh, I'd rather shuffle a card into my deck when I'm winning turn rolls rather than losing them. But, still, free recursion. Still not bad. Uh, in fact, actually, and... Uh, at least it's a May, so, like, you know... If you have uh, something on top of your deck you don't want to shuffle in, you don't have to. So that's always a benefit when it's not when it's a may and not a must. But yeah, I think this is, comes out a little bit weaker ability because of it. And no, I do not want to be famous. If I wanted to be famous, I wouldn't be streaming Super Show. I'd be streaming like uh, Fortnite or something. Uh, let me ban them. Uh, where is it? There it is. I haven't banned someone in a while. Alright, uh, so finish Grapple, the Golden Star Bomb. Power 8 to a 9, Grapple 6 to a 9. Draw one card, flip one card, add one card from your discard pile to your hand. Very good finish. Um, bumping the 6 to a 9 is great, getting an extra 9 from the 8 is great. Uh, so you're really, you have a 5 and a 7, but everything else is gravy. But really, getting a card, flipping a card, and adding a card from your discard pile is obviously 
steady bonuses, reminiscent of other bonuses. Uh, Ibushi style figure four. Uh, so plus two sub. Uh, five to a seven. Grapple six to a seven. If your opponent breaks out, you may put this card into play. When you hit another card, discard this card from play. So, uh, it's so interesting as a card. Because obviously, yes, it's great. Uh, your sub's going to jump from a 5 to a 7. Which means, will you play the turn robos to make your 7 to an 8 when you have it in play? Your grapple goes up. Uh, it bumps your low ones stats, your 5 and your 6. So that actually helps you in a bit against uh, your opponent breaking out. Uh, but it only stays in play until you hit a card. So it can give you, you get a little extra bonuses to your bottoms skills to turn rolls until you win another turn roll. And then if you want to go for it, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's neat. Uh, I mean, it, not even just necessarily a turn, because if you use it to pass and bury, it would still stay in play. So you can build things up that way. You could use it to build into a sp uh, into a um, entrance card uh, that you need to activate uh, to get this into play when a couple turn rolls in the low. Uh, it's neat. Uh, it's... I, I like the bonuses for the finish rolls more so than the card effect, but the card effect is useful. Like, because, you know, it's definitely going into the play. Uh, yeah, it's a good one. I think his finishers are solid. Uh, I think he's going to be interesting. Yeah, leave him in play and push the count out. Yep, yeah, definitely. You definitely could do that as well. Uh, yeah, the only uh, sad thing with it is, of course, like, uh, cards like uh, dude, Corner Slingshot. Oh, well, he can't run Corner Slingshot, but that type of line where you can add your card from play are uh, follow-ups, so you can't do it. But if there were to be a lead that allowed you to pick up a card from in play, it would be pretty cool. Um Because that would be awesome, leaving it in play, playing a lead that could probably be a skill lead at that point. Just like the uh, follow-ups are. Pick up your follow-up, uh, your finish from play. It's it's neat. I mean, it's not as powerful. I mean, obviously, Dr. Jake Till's gimmick does something similar with his finishers. but ob And obviously, that's far more powerful overall. But I think actually for as just an effect for the card text, it's really good. I mean, because, you know... It's going, I mean, the only way it really hurts you is if you're playing a lead card to recur your finisher, because your finisher wouldn't then be in the discard pile, but that's neither here nor there. I mean, I don't think that's a big issue to worry, worry about. I think the benefits of having the bonuses, having your two lowest skills being a 7 rather than a 5 and a 6 is far more beneficial than any potential penalties for having your finisher on the field. All right. Going for the last one now. Let me. All right. Pull the die out. So I rolled strike technique, and let's see what this one gets me. Another technique. Technique heavy cards. All right. All right, this shrink wrap. There it goes. I definitely gotta say this shrink wrap recently has been a lot better than that one when he couldn't really ever open things. Even though I still have problems opening things. There we go. All right, so we know the card deck is going to be the same as earlier. So let me pull the competitors off real quick. Same cards. Same beautiful crowd meter. But this one... See, now, this is actually probably one of the best things in here. And it is... Got my back with... 
I mean, I get these. These should count as signed because there's like a New Japan logo on them already, I think. So I think these should be good right away because New Japan signed them. Bushi Road. Uh, yep, so got my pack. Uh, once a match on your opponent's turn, when your opponent has six or more cards in their hand than you, you may search your deck for one card, add it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. Very, very good. Uh, very powerful spectacle. Obviously, the six card differential makes it tough to use. I mean, it's nowhere near as reliable as a good old fashioned taunt. But when it comes into play, it is very good. And I, because I think, uh, I think the Newman version to uh, search your deck is a seven card difference. So, actually, that's it. Now, nah, that's not something we need to worry about. All right. Let's go with the good old fashioned Zach Saber Jr. When you roll technique, flip three cards or add one submission from your discard pile to your hand. Obviously. Beautiful art. Uh, I don't know. Does his logo count the same as the other one? All right. Anyway, uh, so his finished strike is the penalty kick. Eight to a nine. Six to a nine. Shuffle three cards from your discard pile into your deck. When you have zero cards in your deck, this card is also a lead. It is also a lead strike with kick in the name. So if you are someone who runs champion a Kickstarter, you can abuse the hell of it. Not as good as uh, Campiono de la Parra, or whatever his name is, the lava guy. Uh, who can abuse it pretty well, but really good. Finish grapple of the Zack Driver. Uh, seven goes to a nine. Draw three cards. So, this is where uh, you start talking about comparisons to his original set. Because he is, he has been in the game before. And, um, yeah. Yeah, he definitely, yeah, he has a new logo, which is one of the tough things with him. Because uh, I'm actually going to bring out my Zack Sabre Jr. set, so this is why. So, like, so you look at the old set, uh, and obviously, I think the art on the new set's a lot better. All right, let me actually move it up. I think the art on the new set's a lot better than the old set. Same gimmick, same stat line. Uh, obviously, uh, penalty kick is the same. But, of course, the new one looks a lot better than the old one. Uh, the interesting things come into this one is when you bring out the Saber Suplex and compare it to the Zack Driver. So, uh, Zack Driver just turns your 7 to a 9, draw 3 cards. Uh, Saber Suplex, uh, 5 goes to a 7, 7 goes to an 8. 9 goes to a 10, and if you hit a submission last turn, double these bonuses. So, 5 to a 9, obviously, 7 to a 9, just like the Zack Driver, and 9 to an 11. Um, so, oof, uh, I think draw 3 cards is nice, but the problem with it is you're playing a flip-heavy competitor, so you're going to burn through your deck normally anyway, trying to get your discard pile with subs in it and things like that. So I don't know if the draw three, it's not going to be great for your late game because you're not going to have much of a deck when you hit it. Whereas the Saber Suplex and the old competitor uh, was a lot more useful because you're recurring subs so often and things like Full Nelson open your opponent up for the Saber Suplex and give you a turn roll bonus and double the bonuses. So, uh, when it comes to finishers right now, I would say, with just these two out, uh, the old Zack Sabre Jr. is a little bit better. And then you get to the Clarky Cat. I know there's a bunch of people who are going to love this just because it has cat in the name. But, you know. So... You get a plus three to power, so the five becomes an eight. Flip three cards or add one submission with arm in the name from your discard pile to your hand. Um, 
So, compared to the old Cross Arm Breaker, which is a stop any strike but flying or splash in the name, your opponent buries one random card in their hand for each card you have in play with Arm in the name. So, this is definitely a play style difference here. Um, Clarky Cat's great in that it bumps your 5 to an 8. And then you get the, you can either flip more cards or add an arm sub to your hand. Which, obviously, one of the best choices is going to be for uh, to run Flipping Armbar. Uh, so your follow-ups, uh, your finished sub will help you, you can bring back it or thin your deck out more. But again, what I was talking about, thinning your deck, I mean, your finished grapples all draw three. So thinning your deck doesn't help you, makes that card less effective. Now the cross arm breaker, uh, no bonuses to your finish roll, so it's weaker in that regard. Um, you still have a five, uh, but it's a stop finish. Uh, there's some really good flying cards in the game. Uh, there's some really good splash cards in the game. Uh, I mean, Cross Arm Breaker is a finish you can hit first. You can't hit it first turn. Uh, but if someone plays a... It's actually a finish that can stop a lead with the Flying Super Snap Face Punch when it's not played on first turn. Plus, the your opponent randomly buries one card plus whatever number of arm cards you have in play. So, it's... I think Cross Arm Breaker... So, this is one of those things where it's the New Japan deck that is sad because I think... Zack Sabre Jr. is a lot better in his original form than the new one. I mean, the art's better. I wish I would rather use this face card than this one. But, like, these, I personally think are better. Which you didn't really come here to be editorialized why I think the new Zack Sabre Jr. isn't as good as the old one. Uh, of course, the old ones you can't get it anyway anymore. So he's harder to get, but it's weird. It's not like unless you bought these sets when they got pre-ordered, you're probably not getting one of these either. No, it's one of those things that uh, they're both hard to get. But uh, if I had a choice, I would. I'm gonna. I'm gonna personally keep using my original Zack Saber Jr. All right. Uh, anyway, let's move on to Will Osprey. Once a turn, when you flip a strike or grapple, you may add it to your hand. This is... Yeah, uh, so go back to that. Yeah, RG. Yeah, the the difference in this... The, the, yeah, the sub... Like, that's the thing. Like, hold on. Go back. The sub difference with Zack Sabre Jr. is... It's great. Like, it's different play style. One is... Ooh, well, I get someone by surprise. Like... If you come out playing this, your opponent, like, you could potentially, if they're playing the flying or splash strike cards, you could shut them down from playing them just on the threat of your finish sub. Uh, the other one, though, is on itself going to be better at finishing the game. Because turning your 5 to an 8 is better than no bonuses at all. Especially since it's your 5. Uh, and the... Now, when you get to the... Obviously, Bury is a more powerful card effect than adding back a sub. But, you know, still. It, it's it's interesting. But, yeah, the finished grapple is definitely sad for the the new one. All right. Any, I think it could have used more bonuses than just draw three cards. All right. So, Will Ospreay, yeah. So, it was once a turn. When you flip a strike or a grapple, you may add it to your hand. So basically, anytime you flip cards, you got a two and three chance of adding one of those car card to your hand. Uh, so, um, you know, it's good. Hey, Evil Ed, we're we're near the end of it. Uh, we've been on for a little bit, but it's good. Uh, so this is, I think, a really good gimmick. Um. Because you get to thin your deck and uh, bring cards back. So I think he is solid with a like a flip four, uh, grab back one card even without going to the skills. Or if you're even if you're running like the Daredevil Dive to flip four, add two, 
and potentially you could add three. I don't know. Uh, depending on if you add something, flip something good. Of course, in those regards, when you're adding half the cards anyway. But I think where what he'll really shine with uh, is like the woolly on the ropes line. The look at your top four, flip two, because you can choose two cards to flip. So you can keep basically, you'll do that. You'll basically add two to your hand, add one card from your discard pile to your hand, basically of your choice. Because generally when you pull four cards, it's going to be great. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the New Japan sets are great. And the 1 through 27s are cool. I like them. Uh, and other than Zack Sabre Jr., I've been really happy with uh, all of them. Alright, uh, so Will Ospreay's finish strike is the Hidden Blade. 9 to a 10, 7 to an 8. If you roll agility for your turn roll, this card is also a follow-up. Your agility is your 10. Roll a 10. It's that's, I think that's great. Like I think the bonuses are good enough to finish opponents. I mean, yes, I always prefer pumping my lower stats, but I but the ability to roll agility to have it be a follow up is great. Uh, it's so cool. Uh, I mean, roll your ten, hit it follow up. I mean, it's not quite like a make it unstoppable or something like that, but it's awesome. I like the hidden blade. Uh, the finished grapple is the Stormbreaker. Uh, six goes to an eight. Seven goes to a nine. If your opponent has three other submissions in play, stop any submission. Man, really got to suck to be a guy whose uh, only good finisher is a su finished submission. Um, with, uh, all these uh, stop finish submission stops out there. But Stormbreaker's great. Um, it's another one that's going to control your opponent in the sense that if they know this card exists, they're going to be, and they're going to be weary about getting a, another sub in play, uh, especially since this is any sub. So it's one of those things where you probably don't need to run um, your three and your six if you don't want to, because you kind of want your opponent to get uh, the little subs in play. I mean, you probably still run a six, or not six. I'm thinking, sorry, two and five. Um, I'm thinking sub and not that. You're two and you're five. Uh, you probably still want to run a five because a rejected still probably a really good solid card. But you probably don't want to sweat the leads. Uh, unless you're really worried about Atomic Chicken Wing. Or the few other lead finish subs. But uh, definitely want to stop follow-up subs. Actually, you know what? As a, a player of the Fox Ready competitor, you should really never uh, run any deck with stops for follow-up subs. No one ever uses follow-up subs. But yeah, it's one of those things where basically you're going to limit your opponent to have three subs in play at most it's because they're going to fear that they're going to get hit with the, uh, the finish stop. And it's a finish stop that the six going to an eight, the seven going to the nine hits hard. Like every... Like, uh, 8, so it's 5, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10 for your finisher array is just bonkers. I mean, that alone is probably why I'm going to play Will Ospreay. I know I would kind of like to see those, I don't know, uh, Jeff Bravo's thoughts, stats off the top of my head, but it'd be nice to see that because, you know, I like running finish stops in Jeff Bravo. All right, er, stop finishes. Osprey style figure four. Um. Uh, Plus four to submission, six to a ten. Shuffle eight cards from your discard pile into your deck. Two to his eight to his ten for Bravo. That oof. That's and your opponent's not going to know Bravo can run it, so it most likely he's going to be able to sneak in. Ooh man, Stormbreaker good. Stormbreaker good. So this Osprey style figure four though, uh, six to a ten is great. Uh, shuffle eight cards from your discard pile into your deck is bonkers this is a awesome late game finish because if you don't do the job you just recurred all your stops back that were in your discard pile uh obviously before it that's the only downside is you want them to be in your discard pile and not in your play field when you hit this but it's a basically a good second finisher i would say i mean 
you're going to want to hit one of these finishers to clear the board. To get all your stops that are locked off. And then you want to hit that to potentially end the game. And also recur your stuff back. Eight cars is a solid. Uh, of course, the one downside is it is must. It's a max. The eight is not a may up to. So if you have seven crappy cards in your discard pile, uh, all seven are crappy cards are going back. So. But, again, you have a gimmick that can ease all flipping, so you should be thinning your deck that way. And really, honestly, with a card pool now, like, you really shouldn't have crappy cards in your deck. Unless you, like, are very unlucky in random cards or just haven't been able to get them. Alright. Tanahashi. The ace, who is being saved for last by request. Uh, when you hit a card with dragon in the name, your next turn roll is plus two. Um, so we got some good dragon cards. Uh, American Dragon, Leglock, and whatnot uh, is a good card. Uh, a couple of the dragon cards in seven through nine are playable. Um... But dragon's not the greatest keyword in the world. Uh, it's not horrible. But, you know, it's nice. Like, it's definitely playable. Gimmick-wise, it's probably the gimmick I am least liking in the game. I mean, obviously, the art's beautiful. It's a great card. But gimmick-wise, it's, I don't know. Probably the least one of the New Japan line gimmick. So, let's see how he backs it up with his finishers. Let's go with that beautiful high fly flow, which, first off, is awesome art. Like, the action art is amazing. You gotta love it. Uh, very much credit to New Japan on the art, as they are one of the ones that get the art credit. So, uh, the 8 goes to a 9. The 6 goes to an 8. If you hit a card with Dragon in the uh, name last turn, double these bonuses. So, yep, 10. Two 10s. Uh, yeah. Six Dragon slots currently, not counting the 25 through 27. Okay. Uh, I'm forgetting the other... Like, I know the 7, 8, 9 Dragons... The 21 dragon. Is it 21 that's the dragon or 20? I don't know the other ones. But. but so, so the thing is, though, the problem is if uh, you can't put too many dragon cards out because his gimmick, if you could run like, like TJ Marconi's gimmick is insane because he has all those keywords and it's still a plus one. Like pretty much every card in your deck almost can have it. Like, with a plus two, I mean, yeah, uh, plus two, really reasonably, I think, is at most, nine or, at most, I think you should have nine solid cards that can run Dragon, like, okay, American Dragon drop in a plus two, yeah, I forgot that was the 17, I couldn't, re I knew there was a grapple with Dragon in it, but I don't remember what one. Yes, more could come out. But again, the problem with putting more dragon cards out is you run the risk of the gimmick becoming too good. Like, like for instance, let's say there was a tornado team out there that had a gimmick that said that, oh, you uh, when you hit this key card, you flip three cards, add any card from your discard pile to your hand. If you start putting that keyword in good card slots, and if they don't have to give up something, it becomes a really powerful competitor. That's the same thing with the dragon. Like, if you have... If the dragon hits the numbers of a TJ or something like a kick boot and whatnot, uh, yeah, you can't, like, arm it. Like, because the plus two is that much more powerful. So it's... But the key to that is also is, like, when they look at it, they'll look at the 25 through 27 line, which means he's going to shine and no-stop. But generally, you're not going to run those 25, 26, or 27s in a deck normally. So, I mean, it's in slots, some of them that don't matter. But, 
Like, I think if he's at six now and there are good playable cards, I think there's room for three or four more good cards. Like, I wouldn't be surprised to see one or two really good cards with Dragon in the name come out in the 22 through 24 line. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Dragon Screw. Yeah. Yes, Dragon Screw. Yes, I forgot about that one. I, I think I have one of those cards because it's new. But, yes, that is an amazing card. All right. But going back to his finishers and talking about dragon cards is the bringing, bridging dragon suplex, uh, which is obviously uh, giving him a plus two if you kick out. Uh, so plus three of the power. So the five goes to an eight. Grapple goes from a nine to a ten. If you hit a card with dragon in the name last turn, draw four cards. Wow. Uh, so I like this finisher. Again, I like pumping low stats. So turning the five to an eight. Yeah, pumping 5 to an 8 is great. Uh, the 9 giving you a second 10 is awesome. Uh, and then the potential to draw 4 cards off it, which I know I was kind of like shitting on Zack Sabre Jr.'s draw 3. But the difference is, of course, being is this one is way better finisher bonuses. It's also more draw, even though it's conditional. But he's also not a flip gimmick. So getting a draw four off a finisher is a little bit better when you're not like your gimmick isn't encouraging you to burn through your deck. So that is a really solid um, card. And the finish sub, the Texas Clover Hold. Plus three the sub, so seven to a ten. Each time your opponent rolls for a breakout roll, they randomly bury one card in their hand, which is Yeah, which is always good. Uh so I mean Getting a random berry, like your opponent wants to break out on one, or they're going to pretty much. I mean, obviously, unless they're cannoli, uh, they're only going to you lose two cards at most from it from the random berry in general, or if they could be running the ring tank. But because generally, if you you roll three breakout rolls, oh wait, it's rolls. So sorry, yeah, you can get three because it's not succeeding. So yeah, you can get sorry, you can get three. That's a very powerful effect, uh, of course, with the potential to win. And the 7 to the 10 is a decent bonus. Obvious, obviously, every time you get an extra 10, it's a great bonus because, I mean, it's more kill shots a crowd meter 1 or higher. Yeah. Raven's Blood, yeah. That's tough. Which is interesting and... Whereas, the interesting thing about it, in Last Man Standing, it can kind of protect you. Because in Last Man Standing, they randomly could bury your uh, finish that was in your hand. And then make it a lot harder for them to get through your deck to get to it. So, it's weird how the uh, how it works sometimes. Where, like, the finisher in one uh, step, it's amazing. And in the other, it could cost you the match. Because of its bonuses. So. Alright. Well. Uh, so. As a brief overview of this. Uh, the 1 through 27 card decks. Are amazing. Uh, the new cards are cool. The uh, bury a card in a discard pile. Stops are awesome. Uh, I love the key date. I love getting another a DDT as a stop. That's not a skill stop. That's actually useful. Unlike the snap DDT. Uh, the normal, like, rolling forearm, German suplex. I mean, like, getting cards with these names are awesome, because, like, these are normal wrestling names. Like, and getting cards with normal wrestling names is awesome. Corner dropkick is still a weird card to me, this line. The stop a follow-up in 13, 14, or 15. And because, like, what well, gets... So... Oh, man. These are so weird. Just because, like, you're giving up potentially a stop any. Because if these cards could work on a follow-up, 
And obviously, you could have run a card that could have stopped any. Uh, the draw one card, then bury one card in your hand. Uh, it's a net of zero cards. It, yes, you get to bury a card in your hand, and then draw one, and you, you're getting to draw a good card. Um, which, depending on your deck, if you have zero cards in deck, uh, it's bad. It's even worse because then you're just burying a card in your hand. Um, Obviously played offensively. Now, obviously, if you're the Death Machine, uh, Sammy Callahan, you don't have to worry about the berry part. Uh, or if you're someone like uh, Silver Marvel, it's not a big one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, yes, if it's a dead skill. So here, like, the thing is, I like it. I like it in the sense that I like cards that do something. And, like, there's a lot of cards in Super Show that when you play them, you do nothing. Like, there's tons. Like, there's tons of cards where, like, they're all situationally useful. So I do like cards that always do something when played. But there's also the problem is there is also the opportunity cost of it. Like, you're giving up a solid stop for it. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Like, there are competitors where these are going to be good, and they're going to help. But there's also going to be competitors where, like, it just... I don't know. It's tough. It's tough being, like... Yeah, like, the question is, is draw one, bury one, so good that this couldn't have been a, say... Stop any finish grapple. Like, because by running this, you're giving up a good finish stop spot. Like, that's my main thing is like, you only get so many chances to stop finishers in the deck. Like, there's only so many chances to stop a finisher in a deck. So giving one up just to draw one, bury one, especially now that they're going to do, uh, you can run the cravat line of the draw one, bury one for each follow up and play, draw one for each follow up and bury one. Like in the 16, 17, 18s, it makes these cards less great unless you trigger off it uh, because it's risky. Like, I mean, now. Corner, I mean, I like the name Corner. If this was a strike, I mean, I'd probably throw it in a cactus sack just uh, for giggles. Uh, you know, but I think it being a, a card that only stops a follow-up. And, like, that's another thing. If it was strike, I think it'd be better. If you'd see people run it in Okada as well, uh, more so than, like, now. It's... Forget what Okada's. I didn't go over skill trees with them, but uh, Okada's agility seven. So like that's the thing. So here's another dropkick card that works for his gimmick, but uh, it's on his seven stat where he could have been running a ten stat stop of like a running lariat. So it's not even cool for him because he can just bring back a running lariat, or is it leads only? I may have missed that. It might have been better. Is it lead only? Yeah, it's lead. No, lead or follow-up. Okay. So, yeah, like, I don't know. I think it being an agility card hurts it, I think. Uh, and I think it uh, being only a follow-up stop hurts it. But it's interesting. It's going to see... There are obviously competitors, like you said, Cyclone. Yeah. Full spinner smash the name. Oh, uh, let's go. I'll go through them again for you. Uh, so we got punch, look for an opening, chin lock, kick, swing DDT, arm bar, rolling forearm, but that's obviously an old car, uh, German suplex, stare down, knee strike, arm drag, side chin lock, corner drop kick, flapjack, rope break, lariat, uranagi, figure four leg lock, elbow strikes, neck breaker, neck twist, 
Standing Moonsault, Death Valley Driver, Half Balls and Crab, Dropkick, Dirty Tax, Leg Nelson. So no, there are no extra roll, spin, or smash. I don't think there's any extra keywords. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's any snuck in there either. Which, of course, one of the things you have to remember with the names are they didn't have free brain to name these cards. Because new, because if I remember correctly, New Japan uh, wouldn't let them use inventive names for stuff. Like if it was a punch, they had to call it a punch. If it looked like a slap, it would have been a slap. Like they wouldn't let them like, like call it like slap the taste out of his mouth. It would have been just oh no, that's just a slap. So, uh, it, so it's one of those things where like they were very limited in the name. I'm sure. Steve would have loved to throw some boss cards in here if he could have. Uh, but, you know, or some roll cards or spin cards and smash cards and all these beautiful keywords. But he couldn't. Uh, I don't think New Japan let him shoehorn some of them in. But there's good cards. Uh, it's great. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go off in a minute or so. Uh, if anyone has any other questions, I'll stay on for a minute or two to see if any come through. But I really do like the uh, the 23, 24, 20, uh, 22, 23, 24 line of search your deck for a finish and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Your maximum hand size is plus one. I like these cards. Um, there's a bunch of competitors that I think uh, that works for. Like, and the main thing is, one of the cool things about that is you get competitor like. A lot of time, if you put a card on top of your deck from, like, the crossbow line, like, someone's going to try to flip it uh, to get it out off your deck, since flip cards are really useful. Uh, obviously, the downside of this card is you can't pull a card from your discard pile. Uh, so it's a little... So it's... So it's a little bit of a downside there with them. But uh, I think it's... I think that's... I think the I think these cards are a perfect example of good balance. Yeah, like they have the upside. Yes, is you can get any type of finish. Uh, it goes straight to your hand. Uh, your maximum hand size is plus one. Like the upside on these is amazing. The downside is sure you can't fish it out of your discard pile, but like. That's not as bad when you figure you're getting stops now that, like, if you play, you're looking for an opening offensively, you get the bury discard. So you can set it up with that. Like, or if you're running a, uh, one of the 1920s or 21s that, uh, shuffle cards back in as stops the skill cards. I don't know what their names are. But, uh, if you run any of them, uh, you play that, you play one of them, uh, you get to shuffle your cards back in, you're set up for running these to go grab your finishing. So, like, I think these are, in my opinion, in the 1 through 27, those three cards are the best cards in these decks. Like, it's one of those things that I'm glad I have all three sets for them. And, like, it's one of those things where, uh, as some people saw, I do have three sealed, one of each sealed still. Uh, like, it's one of those things where it tempts me to, like, man, I could use more of these. Though, in the end, it might be easier just to, like, alt art them. <laughs> and get them that way. But, uh, they're great cards. Alright, folks. Thank you for stopping by the stream. Uh, it was great. Uh, glad I got to open it. Uh, I'm gonna upload the video to YouTube in case anyone ever wants to go back and watch it. Uh, I uh, am very happy with these decks. I think, in the end, I will say this. These are the best faction packs SRG has released. Like, don't get me wrong, the SRG Universe one was great, especially at the time with the super kick line in it. Uh, the add one to the top of your deck line in it with the rolling forearm and the call to the crowd were, like, amazing value on those decks. Uh, Freak Show was great, especially if you ever went to do Tag Team or Tornado. Freak Show was, like, amazing. Um, 
the family was cool with the lariats and whatnot, but I don't think that one was the best. Uh, but uh, so we will. Uh, but I think hands down these are the best ones. All right, everyone. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.